Good morning, honey. Hello. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. All right, guys. Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. Today is the 12th of March. It's my day off. It's also the day before we're current. Um, I have been studying my drills and um, preparing as, as best I can for recurrent, so I should be in good in good shape. I'm going to read my emergency checklist tonight before I go to bed and maybe watch some more videos, but that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Um, I am going to leave the house in a few minutes and go to the gym. Um, I am thinking about going to see a movie, Dune Part 2, if it's in the matinee that I go to. Uh, it's like five bucks for a movie, as long as you go before 5 p.m. Uh, and I have to get this out to the mail. It is a Scentsy wax warmer or something. I got it at uh, uh, Goodwill for, I don't know, seven, eight dollars. I sold it for 50, so I have to get this out in the mail uh, tonight, <clears throat> maybe tomorrow night at the latest. But yeah, that's it. That's my day. I will see you in a few minutes. Hmm, I'm sad. The cinema's closed. Uh, during the day, during a matinee, it's five bucks, and I wanted to see Doom, but I really don't want to spend, like, 20 bucks on a movie. So, I don't know if they're closed, closed for good, or just closed today, because, I'll tell you, you'll be the only person in the cinema when you go in there on a matinee. So, that's a bust. There is a good will right over there. Hmm, maybe I'll walk in. Oh, guess what today is? If you watched my last video, you already know. It is Eleanor's five-year uh, anniversary of her gotcha date. So she became part of my family five years ago today. Uh, and I am very, very pleased. Um, my life is definitely different with Eleanor. Eleanor, um... Oops. Oh, okay. Hold on, Stevie. Stevie, hold on. All right. Um, so Eleanor has brought a very, very different energy to my life than Buddy did. Uh, if you don't know the history of me and my cats, Buddy, uh, Buddy was my first cat. Uh, I met Buddy when he was walking around my uh, old apartment neighborhood. Uh, he was searching for food and affection and love. If you remember my first video introducing Buddy, he was, um, he let me touch him. It was uh, November of 2017, I think, or October. But he finally let me touch him after like two or three weeks of feeding him. And then he just kind of twined around my ankles and sort of, I fell in love with him. He opened up a part of my heart that I never knew existed. Human beings have never opened up the, the part of my heart and soul that Buddy opened up when I met him and he let me love him. Um, and then uh, it was probably, I don't know, five or six months later, uh, it was today, five years ago, that I was walking with Buddy in the parking, gar parking lot of my old apartment and um, uh, there were a lot of stray cats and I used to feed all of them, particularly Diana, uh, and uh, who I've, I've not seen since I moved. But uh, walking through the parking lot, I looked under a, uh, the uh, body of a vehicle that was parked there. Uh, cats often hung out under cars there. And um, I saw this little black and white lump. Come on, folks. Come on, come on. Um, I saw this little black and white lump. And um, it was a cat. And I said, hey, sweetheart, hi. You know, and no response because Eleanor was under... Uh, the car busy dying. Uh, she had been neutered or spayed or whatever the proper term is for female or male, I don't know. But she had been fixed uh, and then dumped, which is called TNR, trap neuter release. Uh, and then she was fixed. Then she was just released into the neighborhood that she was found in. I don't know if that was originally her neighborhood. I had never seen her before. Uh, and then um, she was, you know, imagine having a hysterectomy against your will and then being dumped on the street homeless with no food, no pain medication, no antibiotics, nothing. And you're left on the street. What would you do? You'd die is what you would do. Um, so Eleanor, I found her under the under this car. I picked her up and she was limp. And um, I immediately started crying. 
and um, carried her to the house, and um, I put her in the walk-in closet. I had a closet that was about as large as my bathroom, and uh, put her on some um, sheets or some blankets or something, and I lay there sleeping with her uh, that night, and the next morning I brought her to the uh, emergency, the vet, I brought her to the vet, they, um, gave her antibiotics, because her, in, her incision on her belly was infected, she was 4.75 pounds, I want to cry right now, thinking of how little she was, she was tiny, and, um, she had an eye infection that was pretty serious, the other eye was infected, but not as badly as the other eye, so they gave me a prescription for, um, uh, her eye drops for her eyes to recover from the eye infection, and I brought her home, and I fed her. She ate pretty, pretty well, and she became part of my family. Uh, I named her Eleanor immediately because she just, she was an Eleanor. She just, she looked like an Eleanor to me. Uh, and um, I'm going to insert a photograph of her belly so you can see. I just, I always spit on my own dashboard, but I don't see any stuff there. Um, I'm going to try and insert a photograph here of what her belly looked like and maybe a photograph of what she looked like in general. Hold on one sec. Yeah, I'm kind of brought to tears almost just looking at her belly and how sad she was. She was so sad. She was suffering, the poor little thing. Uh, but uh, brought her into the house, and a, a week later, she was, like, bouncing around like a kitten. So I don't know how exactly how old Eleanor is. Uh, she um, had had a litter of kittens just before I brought her into the vet. They could tell by her nipples that she had been feeding kittens, but there were no kittens around because... Oftentimes, in stray environments like this, environments like this, strays die. It's not an, a safe uh, uh, environment for for baby kittens in Las Vegas, so frequently they die. So I think I'm thinking Eleanor had babies when she first was able to, and that's six or eight months. I think cats can have babies. I don't know, uh, but she had a litter of kittens. She lost them which makes me sad again, because she would have been a great mom. She would have been a great mom. Um, and um, But I got her. She's part of my family, and she is surprisingly playful today. She's very much like a kitten now. She gets very bored easily, so I play with her frequently. Uh, she loves to sit up in her uh, crow's nests, her cat beds up on top of these things I have at the end of my bed. And we play with these little toys. I have a whole collection of them while she's up there. And that's like her favorite place to play. But um, I love Eleanor and she is such an integral part of my life. Buddy and she get along. Um, Buddy, uh, I, I guess he puts up with her. He'd rather be by himself with me until he's alone because when we lived when we lived alone together it was just the two of us and I would go on trips I would come home and he was so sad and he was so lonely and so bored so as much as he doesn't love Eleanor he has company and that's good um Claire I still miss Claire every day Claire um was Eleanor's kind of pal they weren't super close but they would hang out they would interact a lot uh, and Claire would interact with Buddy more often. He and she got along better than anything else. Um, I still think three cats is like the perfect number of cats to have, but I can't have another cat. Buddy gets so jealous, even of Eleanor, after all these years. Buddy gets very jealous when, when I pay any attention to Eleanor. If I'm loving on Eleanor, wait, you're going to hear Buddy going, meow. You know, he doesn't like it. He wants to be the sole source of attention. But happy birthday to Eleanor. And uh, I'm going to walk into Goodwill, check out what they have here. And then there's a Sprouts right there. I might grab a snack or something at Sprouts. Oh, did you see the, the photograph of the my um, scale this morning? Now, I don't, I don't want to press myself that every day there's going to be a lower number there. I don't want to put that pressure on me, but the fact that it is a little bit lower than it was the last time I weighed myself made me feel very good. So I'm trying not to like judge myself on that weight, uh, but it was exciting to me. So yay. All right, let me go into a good book.
All right, so I did a little bit of shopping. There wasn't really a lot in the store to even show you, so I didn't bother filming, but I did find three items. Um, first, a pair of shoes. I love shoes. I probably have 30. She just opened the door and hit my car. Hello. Excuse me. Oh my God. Did you see how mad I got? Boom. Mad. Uh, yeah. So I just opened up my car door, yelled across at her. She's probably about 35, 40 feet away from me, uh, getting close to the goodwill. I, I yelled at her. I'm like, you just hit my car so hard that it moved and there's no apology. I, I yelled like, and I'm loud. Um, yelled, <clears throat> and she's like, it's fine, you didn't have, there's no problem, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't see any evidence of damage to the car, but it's a white car, so you don't really see scratches that easily, so I don't know. But, um, I was so upset at her absolute dismissal of the fact that she just hit my car while I'm sitting in it. How embarrassing with that. I would be mortified. I would be mortified. So, I am very proud of myself that I just yelled at her from across the parking lot loudly. Um, I may have used some colorful words. and uh, but, but the growth is the old me would have come at her and I would have snatched her hair right off her head. That was the old me. I would have snatched her hair off her head so fast she would have been like had whiplash. But I didn't. I just yelled at her. So I'm feeling pretty good about myself. What was I saying? I love shoes. I hope you're entertained by my realness here. Um, I'm feeling the feelings. Um, I love my car. Don't damage it. But um, so I bought a pair of shoes. I love shoes. And this is a pair of Johnson and Murphy um, wingtip loafers with leather and linen up here. They are practically unworn. Someone put them on and it looks like they spun on a floor. But there's, there's like a little bit of color here. But they, they have not really been worn. Maybe once. Maybe once. And then they must have died because the shoes are at Goodwill. So, um, yeah. All of, I have a lot of shoes. I have a lot of shoes. I'm probably in danger of becoming the next Imelda Marcos. But um, they cost me $10. And they're beautiful. They're gorgeous. Uh, do you remember this hat? It's still in my car. I would wear this with this. I would totally wear this hat with these shoes. A little pair of linen shorts. Um, I have a pair of um, light blue, like sky blue linen shorts. I would easily wear this with a white shirt maybe and that hat. I don't know. But I love these shoes. Uh, Johnson & Murphy no longer makes them. They were $150 something dollars originally um, and they're for um, on, they're listed on eBay, Poshmark, everywhere for good money. The t and they fit me. They're my size. The temptation, of course, is to list them. If I ever got back to listing, I have been so bad. Um, I could list these for sale. I could easily sell them for seven or eight times what I paid for them, but I love them so much, I'm probably going to end up keeping them. Um, and then I bought two purses. I don't look at uh, the bags at Google very often because they usually are garbage absolute garbage. Uh, but I found this. I don't know. Ladies, do you like this? I love this bag. If I were a girl, this is a bag I would carry. This is fabric. It's like a, a very heavy knit that has been gilded with like a bronze finish. This is all leather. These little amber colored stones and this one under this piece of lace are real pieces of tiger eye. Those are actual pieces of tiger eye, um, which is, I wouldn't call it a semi-precious gemstone, but it's a very nice stone. Uh, and these faceted, um, these are plastic, I think, opens up, up on top, and uh, clean. It's perfect inside. There's no, it doesn't look like anyone's ever, anyone ever really ever used it. It's called the G series. I had to look this up on the internet and it turns out to be a Cole Haan bag in the G series. Again, really no, nowhere at all. And I think it's absolutely a beautiful bag. I paid $13 for it, $12.99 red tag. And I think it's a beautiful bag. I just think it's fantastic. It's a little shoulder bag. 
Uh, but I think that's just fantastic. Or, you know, I'd, I'd probably wear it on my elbow, honestly. But I love this chain detail. And it was $13. I'm clearly not going to keep it for myself, obviously, because it takes too long to get ready for me to carry this bag. But <clears throat> I'm definitely going to sell it. And um, items like this in, in this series have sold for fairly good money um, on eBay. And um, Poshmark probably would be a better place for this, but I'm, I don't sell on Poshmark. I, I really uh, don't like the platform. But these are real pieces of um, tiger eye. I just think that's a great looking bag. And while I was there, the same person obviously um, had these bags because they're very, very similar sort of style with all the, you know, accessories here. But this is a bag from a company called Luella, which today makes kind of garbage bags. The, the, if you go to Luella Accessories or Luella Fashion right now, garbage. Uh, but this is clearly a vintage piece. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of, like, this has to be tucked into the chain here. But it's um, sort of a charm bracelet strap in this sort of brass finish with Luella all over the charms. And the bag itself is made of suede, beautiful shape, and it hasn't been worn a lot, if, if ever. With a bag like this, if it's worn very often, you're gonna see the back on suede, you're gonna see a lot of wear on the suede. There's nothing here, it's hard to even see the fingerprints uh, as I move along here. Uh, lots of these little brass sort of button details here. This is like a little stirrup or something. I don't know. I love these little tassels. I just I just love this bag. Uh, and uh, the suede's in great condition. Uh, and once again, I don't see it's ever been used. And it's a fairly modern bag because the pockets are large enough for modern smartphones. So I don't know when this was made, but it's made beautifully and there's just hardly any wear and tear at all um harder to find comps on this bag on ebay right now but i think i'll certainly be able to do at least four or five times what i paid for this bag and i paid 15. this is the one i regretted buying to a degree because i don't think it's going to sell as fast as that kohan piece but i'm very pleased with these um these three items. I have been talking for seven minutes now about what I bought at Goodwill. Let me go eat something and I will see you later. Let's see if she hits my car. <laughs> nope, she's thoughtful. It's very, very nice. All right, back at Planet Fitness. So I showed you those photographs of Eleanor's belly uh, when I found her and um, what she looked like at the vet the next day. Um, she was so skinny. She was 4.75 pounds. Uh, and the hair, the fur on her body was really, really short compared to today. If you look back at that picture you just watched a few minutes ago, if you look at the hair around the side of her head and around her uh, chest, her hair now is long and luxuriant. She has this like full on mane going on, especially around, I call it her blouse. Uh, she frequently gets food caught on it. And I'm like, you got food on your blouse, honey. Uh, but uh, her hair has grown out. She's quite luxuriant compared to what she looked like when I first found her. But she wasn't eating. Now, mm, she eats. All right, so let's go into the gym and uh, burn some calories, shall we? I don't think I like the electrical. It's hard. <laughs> Oh my goodness, all right, so I said the other day that I'd never been on, on an elliptical, so it just, it looks silly. I mean, it just, you get up there all flopping around. And uh, one of y'all said, no, do it. It's a good exercise for your legs, your whole body, your arms. Oh my goodness, I don't know what a low setting is on that. So I set it to like 10 or something and went crazy. And uh, oh my goodness, that's quite a workout. I mean, I've, I was only up there for maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes. And I can feel my butt, you know, my, my legs, but my butt, oh my goodness. Uh, so, yeah, maybe I'll come back to that, but I was a little overwhelmed <laughs> by even a few minutes on the elliptical. All right, let me get out there, get some water, and then get back out there. Oh, all right. Oh, there's my car. All right, so that was a good workout. That was a good workout. Um, it was very busy in there tonight. Um, most of the free weights that I would have reached for instinctively were being used climb into my car 
Uh, so I had to use the 35 pound uh, dumbbells to do my bicep curls. And I did two sets of those uh, before I had to stop. I was like, oh my God, two sets of uh, 10 reps each arm. And uh, two sets of that, I had to stop. Then I went over, I did some chest uh, presses on a machine. Uh, and then what else did I do? Uh, some triceps on the machine. And then I jumped back on the um, elliptical. It's really nice. The elliptical, when you enter your weight, I put in 212 just to round up. Uh, and um, it's nice because uh, it looks like I can burn more calories on the elliptical than I could on a treadmill. So I'll stick to the elliptical. But I did a mile on the elliptical, which was like 110 calories. And then um, went back to the free weights. And I picked up the 35-pound weights again. And I did another set of um, 10 reps per arm. So I felt like it was a good workout for me. Since it's only my, like, I don't know, fifth or sixth workout uh, since I've come back to going to the gym. <clears throat> I know it's too soon to build muscle mass, <clears throat> but look, I feel this is all fake because I just, just stopped lifting. So it's all pumped up to its best, you know, but that's my arm having just worked out. So I think if I, of course, if I stop pumping it, it goes right back flat again. But, um, so I have some, some hope it'll go back to being, um, a little more attractive than it is right now. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is grab a quick bite to eat. I might make a little bit of pasta cause I have an open pasta sauce, uh, in the refrigerator. I might make a little regular pasta, just enough to kind of fit a cereal bowl and have one of my protein drinks because I just worked out uh, for dinner. And then um, I'm going to go over my emergency checklists in preparation for tomorrow's recurrent. Then I want to get a good solid like eight, nine hours of sleep uh, before I have to get up and get ready for recurrent because I really want to be well rested and uh, prepared. So I think that's going to be it for this video. Next time you see, we'll, we'll probably be just a little short video of a synopsis of my experience with recurrent. But uh, wish me luck. And um, at, at this point, I'm going to say goodbye and fly safe. But uh, I'm going to throw some clips of Eleanor to celebrate her five-year uh, gotcha day And um, at the end of this video. It's some recent pictures that I think are very cute. Or maybe I'll dip back into my uh, little... Um, uh, pile of photos that I have of her in the, in the, in the past that I thought are just special. So I'll include those photographs now. Thank you very much for joining me on this video and I will see you again very soon. All right, fly safe. Enjoy the pictures.